Welcome to another video of Anatomy and Physiology. Uh, this video I'm going to be highlighting the human eye. This video is a long time coming. I've been uh, looking forward to doing this one for a while. I prepared the script for it maybe, honestly, maybe about a year ago and I'm uh, just now getting around to, to actually making the video. Um, these last several months I've been focused on, on other um, subject matter. But in any case, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the human eyeball. So the way I'm going to approach this video is this is a basic anatomy of the eye and I'm going to start from the most superficial aspects of the eye and then make my way um, inside. So um, starting with the protective barrier of the eye, the eye is protected by the skull. Okay, It's protected by the frontal bone, your maxilla, zygomatic, and then on the uh, medial aspect of the eye, on the medial border, you're protected by your lacrimal bone and your ethmoid. Okay, and then posteriorly, you have your sphenoid bone. Okay, all right, and then of course, I've discussed your um, your extrinsic muscles. Oops, let me highlight those muscles. Okay, so you have the superior rectus right here, your uh, superior, oops, that's your superior rectus, and then this is your levator palpebrae superioris, okay, for your um, for your eyelids, and then your lateral rectus, your medial rectus, and inferior rectus, and inferior oblique. Okay, so these are the eyes that control eye movement, and I discussed these in greater detail in the cranial nerves video. All right, well, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a deeper look inside the eye. All right, so getting a little bit more in-depth into the eye, I'm going to be looking at what's called the lacrimal duct system. Okay. The lacrimal duct system consists of your lacry lacrimal tear gland, right up here, okay, and a series of ducts that uh, drain these tears away from the eye and eventually into the nose. So let's look at this, uh, this gland here. Okay, This is called your lacrimal gland. This is on the uh, supralateral aspect of the eye, and it secretes tears which help to lubricate and cleanse the eye. Okay, they secrete enzymes, lysosomes that break down the cell walls of bacteria, so they maintain the, the health of the eye by preventing infection. And these tears are secreted and they are drained into the eyeball, into the conjunctiva via these uh, excretory uh, ducts. As you can see right here, you have about six or twelve of them that will drain these, um, these tears into the eye. All right, let's zoom out a little bit now. They will do their job. They will moisten the eye, keep it keep it healthy and uh, sterile. And these tears will build up on the aspect of the eye called the lacrimal punctum. It's a little corner of the eye that's closest to your nose. Um, this is the part where you're more than likely to develop some uh, what they call eye boogers, right? And uh, that's the technical medical term for it, by the way. So in any case, so these tears will build up and they will drain from the, uh, from the eye to the lacrimal caniculi, okay? And then they will drain Drain them into here, the lacrimal sac. Okay, let me get a better view of that lacrimal sac. And then you can see, you can see now the nasal lacrimal duct. Okay, these nasal lacrimal duct will then drain the tears into the nose and into the back of the throat and eventually into the stomach. Okay, so uh, that again is the lacrimal apparatus. And this is how your tears are both uh, secreted and drained out of the eye. And this again helps to maintain good eye health. So we're taking a look now at the actual physical eyeball. Um, and as you can see, it's made out of a couple of layers here. In fact, there's three layers, and we call these layers tunics. Think of a tunic, or when, you, when I say tunic, think of a coat, okay? Um, wrapping yourself around a coat. So the eyeball is wrapped around three layers of tunics. Okay, you have the inner layer, the retina, and then you have your middle layer, your choroid, or the vascular layer, and then we have the outermost layer, the sclera, or the fibrous layer. And this is the one that we're going to highlight uh, right now. And uh, this vascular layer, uh, as you can see here, the part that I have highlighted is the white part, okay? And this is the part that covers most of the, uh, most of the eye on the outside. This is called the sclera, okay? The surface consists of dense collagenous connective tissue, so it's pretty tough and it protects the eye pretty well. 
It's perforated by blood vessels, as you can see. If you ever had a bloodshot eye, then uh, those blood vessels are pretty obvious. Or if you ever had a subconjunctival uh, hemorrhage, uh, which I had, uh, is when a tiny blood vessel in the eye burst, and it looks like a it looks like a really red, uh, bloody blot in the eye, and uh, it looks pretty gross. Um, fairly harmless, but um, you know it, it can happen from blunt trauma, sneezing. Uh, in my case, I have no idea what caused mine. Uh, I just remember um, I was actually in Fiji, and somebody pointed it out one day, and I was like, "Oh wow, you know, maybe it was uh, the change in air pressure in my flight." I have no idea. But in any case, if you've ever seen one, uh, you'll know it for sure. So the sclera wraps around the eye all the way to the anterior portion of the eye, and it can, runs continuous with the cornea. Now the cornea is not as obvious. You can't really see it because it's transparent. The proteins that make up the cornea uh, are aligned in such a way, in such a geometric way that uh, they're transparent and they allow light to go in, okay? And you can see here that they allow light to go in through the pupil there. Just like glass. Glass, uh, glass is, uh, the atoms are arranged in such a way that uh, they allow light to go um, unhindered right through it, okay? So uh, something interesting about the cornea too is that it's also a source of uh, stem cells that give the cornea a great capacity for healing. It has great healing powers. If you've ever scratched your cornea before, uh, you know that it's a fairly painful experience, and I have had that happen before. Um, but luckily, um, the stem cells in the cornea do do give the cornea the ability to heal pretty fast. Okay, so again, this is our first tunic, our first layer, the fibrous layer, or our tunica fibrosa, okay? And it's made out of two regions, the, uh, the sclera and then our cornea. And now our second layer, our vascular layer, okay, or our uh, vascular layer, tunica vasculosa. Uh, this is also called the uvea. Uh, for those of you who speak Spanish, uvia uh, may sound like the word uva, which is Spanish for grape. Uva, uh, the reason why it has that Latin name also is because when you dissect it, it and you peel it, it has that um, that it has an uva, a grape-like um, uh, look to it. Okay, so our inner, or uh, yeah, I'm sorry, not our inner, but our vascular or our middle layer. I'm going to remove our sclera here so we can get a better look at this. All right, there we go. That's much, much better. Okay, so this is made out of three regions. Our first region is our choroid, which you're seeing right here, our ciliary body, right there, and then our iris, there. All right, so let's begin first with the, the largest and most obvious aspect, the choroid. Okay, this is a highly vascular uh, deeply pigmented layer of tissue right behind the retina or right above the retina. See, there's a retina right there, but we'll address that later. So let's follow the choroid from the beginning and the, on the posterior end of it. So this is where the optic lens will come in, or the optic nerve will come in, and this is the posterior aspect of the choroid. And then as we turn it at, around to the anterior aspect, it will then turn into, it runs continuous with what's called the ciliary muscles. Okay, and then those ciliary muscles will control the iris. They control the uh, diameter of the iris or the diameter of the pupil, the opening or closing, constricting of it. Okay, so if the eye, if the brain needs more light to process what's being seen, then, uh, then this pupil will dilate and it'll open up allowing more light. Or if it's too bright, too much light, then it'll constrict and close in and restrict the amount of light that can go into the eyeball. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what these ciliary muscles contribute uh, to the anatomy and function of the eye. So you're seeing here that I'm turning it posteriorly, okay, and I have an opening of the eye, but I have, it's pretty cloudy in there. This is what's called the vitreous body. Okay, I'll discuss that next. So let me remove that for now. So this is the ciliary body, and you'll notice that there's some jagged, there's a jagged structure here called the ciliary processes. Um, so this part of the eye is uh, responsible for making the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor is the, uh, the fluid that creates the shape of the anterior aspect of the eye. In fact, here, let me give you a, a good view of this. The anterior aspect of the eye can be broken up into two chambers. You have the anterior chamber. The border of that would be the curvature of the cornea, 
okay, so this curvature right here of the cornea, and it ends at the iris. So that's the anterior chamber. This is the fluid, the aqueous humor that that uh, that ends up here in the anterior chamber, and that anterior chamber is um, is connected to the posterior chamber via. Uh, you see this little blue ring right here. So here, let me I can give you a better view of it there. Here, let me get rid of the cornea. Okay, and maybe you can see the less glare. This is the canal of Schlem. Okay, this is where the drainage. This is the drainage system of the aqueous humor. Now I'm going to remove the iris. Okay, the iris and the lens. This the iris borders uh, the posterior chamber with the lens. Okay, so let me zoom in. Actually, in fact, uh, what you see there is the uh, the iris muscles, uh, pupillary dilator, and the pupillary sphincter muscles. Okay, so this here, this line right here, bordering with the lens, this is the posterior chamber. Okay, and then of course our canal of Schlem is what uh, drains that. So however much is being produced and secreted, the canal of Schlem aids in draining the uh, whatever equal amount is being produced. That maintains the pressure of the eye. Now, if something were to happen with the canal of Schlem and it gets uh, clogged up, let's say, then you would create pressure in the cornea and that could lead to glaucoma and eventual blindness. So, all right, let's continue on with the ciliary body now. So our ciliary processes, you'll notice that you have these web-like or wire-like structures. Let me see if I can highlight one of them here. There we go. This is our zonular fibers or suspensory fibers. Okay, they're suspending our lens. Okay, so these ciliary processes aid in adjusting the lens. Okay, this is called visual accommodation. If I'm either needing to, uh, to focus in on something that I'm reading up close or perhaps I'm hiking and I'm looking at a mountain miles away, uh, the lens will adjust and it will accommodate for that uh, focus to be able to give you a sharper image. Okay? So that's our ciliary process, and uh, just a quick review, our choroid, okay, turns into our ciliary muscles, and then our iris, the most anterior aspect of the choroid. Okay, so those are the three, those are the three regions of the choroid, and now we'll move on to our innermost aspect of the eye. Okay, last but not least, our, our innermost tunic, okay, this is the retina. This is the nervous tissue of the eye. But before I get to the retina, I want to talk about what gives the retina its shape. And this is called the vitreous body. This is a gel uh, transparent and gelatinous fluid called vitreous humor. And this fluid, okay, this is a vitreous membrane, okay? Kind of like if you're looking at a grape, this is the skin of the grape. And the fluid inside uh, gently presses the retina, this tissue right here, our innermost nervous tissue, it presses the retina right up against our choroid, okay? Keep in mind that the choroid is the blood supply to the eye, so it helps to um, give oxygenated blood, and it also helps to drain out deoxygenated blood and any waste product that's produced in creating the signals that will eventually go to the brain via your optic nerve, okay? So here's our vitreous body, right? Very important. Now, uh, if, if anything ha were to happen, let's say a blunt trauma or some kind of disease, uh, where this vitreous body would re lose its pressure, then what would happen is that the retina would detach from the choroid. Here, let me zoom in a little bit um, and go up. Our retina would detach from the choroid. This would be called a retinal detachment. Okay, uh, You would get something like a hazy vision or flashes, like lightning flashes on the periphery of your vision, on your visual field. and um, Something like that would ever happen. Make sure you see uh, an optometrist or ophthalmologist ASAP. So our retina, again, attaches to our choroid via our vitreous body. Now I'm going to remove the vitreous, vitreous body here. I'm going to zoom out. And here's our retina. It begins at the optic disc, okay, and it wraps around to the anterior aspect, and it ends at what's called the aura serrata, okay? That is the... Um, the most anterior and final ending point of the nervous tissue, the retina. And then as you can see, it, it continues on to your ciliary muscles. So the retina is the only aspect of the brain, and it is considered part of the brain, 
that is uh, visible uh, to the naked eye. Okay, you don't need to dissect anything to, to get a, a view of this. Uh, you might need an ophthalmoscope to get a, an even better view as you view through the um, through your pupil. Yeah, your optometrist would uh, would be uh, using that ophthalmoscope to see your retina. So here's your optic disc. Okay, so your optic disc also cons also called your blind spot. Okay, and the reason why it's your blind spot is because there are no rods or cones. Okay. You have hundreds of millions of rods that uh, that aid in adjusting the intensity of light. Uh, so you, it helps you give it helps you see in the night, and then your cones uh, your cones give you um, your color. Okay, and you have the most and you have the most concentrated amount of cones right here. What's called your fovea centralis or your macula. Okay, and you can see it's right next to your your blind spot, your optic disc, and then your optic disc on the most posterior aspect of the eye runs and continues on to be your optic nerve. Okay, as I mentioned before, uh, your eye second to your brain is the most um, complicated, the most complex organ in the body. Attempts to try to transplant an eye have proven to be just about impossible and that's because of the fact that this optic, di uh, optic nerve has millions of nerve fibers that run through it and then trying to transplant every single one of those nerves has uh, at this moment proven impossible there's no technology that exists that uh, has been able to um, to solve that issue so uh, that does it for the human eye this is a very basic uh, view and anatomy of the eye uh, this is just to get us started and good luck on your studying